Okay, in the last video I spoke about anion exchange chromatography and now I will talk about cation exchange chromatography. See, one important point about chromatography, let's take an enzyme mixture. Again, say ABC is the enzyme mixture that you are having and among these AC is acid phosphatase. Suppose this enzyme is there, C is acid phosphatase. Now acid phosphatase has a PI, the isoelectric point, 6.6, right? So at pH greater than 6.6, that is say 7.6, 1 pH above or 1 pH below that we are saying. So at pH 7.6, its charge will be negative. So this acid phosphatase at pH 7.6 will become an anion. At pH 5.6, it will become a cation, it will be positive, right? This is one of the most important advantages of ion exchange chromatography that you can use this technique at positive and negative charges. In both cases, you can use it. If you are, have, uh, you, if you are having a cation exchanger available in your lab, if you have a cation exchanger available in your lab, then you can apply this sample ABC, ABC sample containing acid phosphatase at pH 6.6, uh, at pH 5.6. If you have an anion exchanger available in your lab, so you can use it at pH 7.6, this sample, ABC sample which is containing the enzyme acid phosphatase. Now pepsin which I discussed in the last video was, uh, was different. Uh, it cannot be take, it cannot be used in presence of a cation exchanger because uh, it's a totally rare case. But in general, uh, most of the enzymes and most of the proteins have PI, the isoelectric point, somewhere in between. They can be used with a in they can be used with a cation exchanger also, and they can be used with a anion exchanger also. Now here I am taking a mixture A, B, C. Among this C is acid phosphatase and we have we are separating it with a cation exchanger at pH 5.6. I am not taking 7.6 because it will become an anion exchanger and anion exchanger we have discussed in the last video. Right? So I will rub this part. So at pH 5.6 this is positively charged. If sample is positively charged, we discussed before, so it will bind to the negatively charged. What is this? This is the cation exchanger. Cation exchanger binds to positively charged cations and always has a negative charge. Inside is positive charge. Binds to or you can say adsorbs to the sample which has negative charge. Now this was the first step, first step was preparation of the column and the column I have drawn only one bit for your better understanding, right. Now in the second step you will apply the sample ABC at pH 5.6 over here, right. Among these we, I am not considering A and B, let's consider only C, this C is positive which are, so what will happen? This C will come and it will bind because it is positively charged. And what will what about A and B? A and B will be either eluted out or they will remain somewhere over here. They will remain somewhere you say over here, they will remain or they will be eluted out. Clear? Now what we have to do now, we have to separate this C from the entire mixture, from this uh, cation exchanger. To separate the C from the cation exchanger, you will use an eluent. Clear? Eluent, in case of cation exchanger, should be 1 pH above, not below, like in the case of an ion exchanger. So, eluent pH will now be 6.61 pH above and a higher, suppose this has the high mix strength of 1 molar and a higher ionic strength, this is 1.5 molar. Clear? Now I will delete this part of the work from here. Destroy it again. So 
suppose you delete. I am making one more. So what will happen? This is the bead, right? And from this bead C is totally separated out. And what was there? We had provided an eluent. We had provided this eluent over here at pH 6.6. .6. Now 6.6 .6 is the PI of acid phosphatase. 6.6 .6 is the PI. So at PI this C will be separated from the bead. Here. So and uh, what will bind to the bead now? This 1.5 molar buffer that we have added or whatever binds but C will not bind because C is now neutral. It is at pH 6.6 .6. and remember this pH is higher than this pH. In cation exchanger we use a eluent at higher pH in compared to before uh, the pH of the sample. Right? So in next step what will happen? This C C will come out. Right? And what will this will be removed from here? Now if you suspect that some C's are left over here still and we have to separate them further, which is not so this will become eluent one. You can take another eluent that is eluent two again at it should be at pH 6.6 .6 because this is the isolated point and you take it at two more. Increase the ionic strength. Again, you increase the ionic strength so more buffers. If you suspect that some C is left bound over here, so more buffer will come and bind over here and will separate this C from this one. So, this is about your cation exchange protocol. Thank you.